Does anybody know how much time a millisecond is? So a millisecond is one one thousandth of a second. That's nothing. Twenty-three of them is even less than a second. So that's how long it takes for us to recognize the emotion in a face. Because God gave us our faces to communicate. And we're so good at this that before consciousness even comes, we recognize the expression in a face. Happiness is the easiest to recognize. The others are a little more difficult to do. They take five or six milliseconds less. Okay, I mean more. So recognizing a face is part of who we are as people. Our faces speak to others before even our thoughts come out or we're allowed to do it. In fact, body language, the way we look and move, and our expression is 85% of communication. So it's a big part of who we are and what we're doing. Now, let's try this. Let me see your happiest face. I don't see that very much. Let me see it again, okay? <laughs> Good. Now let me see your angry faces. Mmm. Ah, now I recognize you. Okay, there you go. So let's look surprised and frightened. Some people aren't doing it. And frightened. <laughs> I'm frightened that this homily's bombing, okay? So there we go. So anyway, <clears throat> we see we have expressions. Now, you might have noticed that as you made the face, the emotion started to come with you, right? You started to feel that way. Like, smile one more time. Ah, somehow you just feel a little better. Now, let's do this face, because this is an important one. Make the face as if someone you loved was coming towards you and you hadn't seen them in a long time. Oh, that's a nice feeling, isn't it? Okay, so our faces reveal what's going on inside of us and also, to a great extent, who we are in that moment. Now, our theme for the beginning of this uh, year is God is love. And we see, we know what that means, that anytime we love or experience love, we're somehow reflecting God in whose image and likeness we're made. We're made like God. Now, we have the, uh, underneath that the words from the author Victor Hugo who said, to love another person is to see the face of God. When we love, when we interact with each other, when we love someone, we're seeing part of God's gift to us through that person, but also part of God's spirit that's in that person. So this um, faith of ours, this religion, this spirituality is very practical because it's what happens to us all every day. It helps us to understand and explain our life experience. God is love. God has given us each other to love and that when we love each other, we're somehow interacting with God in a very deep and beautiful way. And as you see, we have the hands joined, our hands to God, our hands to each other with our gifts and talents, which is the way we express our love. We have the heart, which is a half, two halves, because it takes two people to love, which we know that, right? And then two people or a person and God, it's always two. And then we have the cross in the middle because it reminds us of the way that Jesus showed his love for us, God's love for us, and the fact that love is not easy. It involves sacrifice, and sometimes it hurts to be loving, and sometimes it hurts because we love. So that's all part of the experience, and the different colors reflect the uh, stained glass windows that we have in the church that remind us that even in those broken places where love is difficult and hard and painful, beauty comes through. The glass of these windows is a little cracked and they're chipped a bit and that helps the light come through them more beautifully and that's true in our lives too. The places where we hurt when we invite God's love into them become the beautiful places that we reflect and share for other people. And there's also a great diversity in the way we love with each other. So that's our basic banner and thought for our uh, our theme, but there's more to it. So what's the more to it? Well, to see the face of God in other people uh, is also a challenge for us because it makes us look at ourselves first. We can't recognize goodness and light and beauty in others until we explore what's going on inside of us, right? Because that's an important part of spirituality. Now, 
The readings this weekend speak to that. They're all about people changing. As a matter of fact, it's the first reading starts with God changing. In fact, the word in the New Testament is called metanoia. It means turning from one thing to another. In our case, turning from things that are unloving toward love. So our prayer for this theme is, Lord, turn my face with grace, which means with God's help, to love, right? So we're turning from whatever isn't loving toward what is loving through prayer. And the word in the New Testament for that is metanoia, to turn our heads or our faces, which, which makes sense to us. Now, unbelievably, in the first reading, God changes God's mind, right? Moses haggles with him and says, well, what about this? And God says, okay. God takes his face and looks in a different direction. He sees the situation in a new way. So if God is willing to change God's mind, I think we can, don't you? Okay. Also, we had St. Paul who says, hey, look at me, look at me. I was the biggest persecutor of you people, and now I'm the biggest advocate for Jesus. Paul changed completely from being someone who was so against this new faith in Jesus Christ and then became his greatest witness in the world. Metanoia, changing the face. Paul's prayer, Lord, turn my face. You have entrusted me with your mission. Therefore, I know you've given me the grace, which means the power, which means the gift to turn in a new direction. So, and then we have the parables today. The lost sheep, which again tells us about how deeply God desires to help us change, to turn our face with grace to love. The lost sheep. We also understand the parable about the lost coin. Now, maybe if we lost the coin, we wouldn't be too upset about it, but how about your license or your wallet or your credit card? Am I getting you going here? Or your car? Or, well, I was going to say other people, but there might be a few that wouldn't be too tragic, so that's okay, which is why there's a cross in the middle of the heart. But we're, we're going to skip over that. But you know when you've lost something and you get that feeling that I just don't know where it is and how, that's how God feels about us, trying to help us to turn our face to love. And when we turn to God, when we're lost, God desires us and, and to help us and gives us that face that we did at the beginning. When you see someone you love and you're ready to embrace them because you haven't seen them in a while, let me see that face again. That's how God is always waiting to help us to change, to turn our face with grace to love. So enough talking about that. We have a visual to help you, okay? So Father Matt is going to lift this new banner, and I can tell you this while he's doing it. You're going to have a little prayer card as you leave today that we're going to use all during this four or five weeks of the theme that you're going to be able to see what's up here and what's up there in a few moments at home because you could never remember all of this. And then every week we're going to take a part of it. So come with us on this journey. And if you can't come to church for some reason, you can follow in the bulletin online and even the homilies are going to be on the YouTube. So you, there'll be an opportunity for you to do that. So you see he's lifting the banner. Now those little people uh, are emojis. I took them from Father Matt's family album, okay? So, <clears throat> because we've never been able to meet his family, I said, let everybody see where you come from, okay? So there you go. Okay, so they're rocking along there, great. Okay, so look at that. In the middle, we have our prayer that I told you about. Lord, turn my face with grace to love. Should we say it together? It's not bad, right? Lord, turn my face with grace to love. I think we have that part. now. See how it, there's an acronym there, F-A-C-E, if you follow it down. Fear, attachment, control, entitlement. They're big ideas, they're big words. We're going to pull them apart in the next few weeks, but let's just say they spell out face. That comes from uh, two different authors. I took their ideas, but we adapted it for our theme, and we put the uh, opposite of them after the prayer on the right side, which is faith, acceptance, 
cooperation and empathy. So let's look at how this works. Prayer turns our fear to faith, our attachment to acceptance, our control to cooperation, our entitlement to empathy. So the faces kind of say it for us. Now, what is fear? Fear is, of course, what we have apprehension about, what we dread, what, what makes us afraid. Fear, a faith reminds us that God is with us. For example, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Doesn't change the situation, changes the way we look at it. The other one, attachment. What is attachment? Attachment is when we're overly concerned or obsessed with something or someone. If you think of the person that aggravates you the most, there's an unhealthy attachment there because they're always in your head. Okay, so how do we move away from that? And other things, sometimes it's food or certain activities that we need to be free from. Anything that's holding us too tightly, prayer, God's grace helps us to accept things. God grant me the serenity to accept what I cannot change by trusting in your providence that you know what you're doing because I don't know what you're doing. Okay, so that's a good prayer. Then we have control. Control is any place in our life when we're trying too hard. Doesn't mean we're not supposed to try, but we're trying too hard, especially to change somebody else. You can't do it. <laughs> but you can't do it. So we move from control to cooperation. God, grant me the wisdom to do what I can do and nothing more and then again to trust. So we cooperate. And the last is entitlement. This is a big problem because <clears throat> entitlement is, we say, I work so hard that this should happen. I sacrificed and therefore you should do this. I'm trying so hard and our expectation of what's supposed to happen, which does not meet up with reality a lot, causes us to have a face like that little entitlement person. We're not happy, okay? Now, we can say this. A lot of times with entitlement, you're probably right. It's probably not fair. But guess what? Life isn't. So you can stay miserable saying, or, we can do something else, turn our face with grace to love and say, I don't get it, Lord, give me some empathy. Perhaps the person is unable. Maybe they're even unwilling. What are we going to do with it? Not much. And then we have our prayer. Remember, Lord, bless whatever their name is or this clown, right? And transform me to set me free because why should I carry all this with me? Now, I'm going to give you a quick story. This is long, but I, I think you're still with me here. So I wanted to get this all in. There's a lot to do today. I had an example of this when we were working on it. I went to Colorado, to Denver to do a wedding. Priest friend of mine who I've known for 36 years. So you know when you have a history with someone, this starts to work a lot quicker, okay? So he comes to do the, he shows up early. He says, I'm coming to the rehearsal, I'll help you. I said, I'll be fine, you know, you're doing it. You can relax now, blah, blah, blah. And he comes and basically starts taking over the rehearsal saying, oh no, stand here. Well, that, what he said is good, but you'd be better off well. Ooh. So <clears throat> first I was afraid it wasn't gonna work out, right? So then I said, and I could feel this. You and you with me in this? I could feel it coming. Like, you know, the, how many wedding? And now, of course, he's older. He's done twice as many wedding rehearsals. I wasn't having any of it. And I thought of these faces because I was all of them on the left. I mean, true. And plus, everybody's looking at you in the rehearsal. I'm trying to be nice. And I'm thinking, is that altar attached to the floor? Or can I lift it and throw it? OK, so I was, I was. Yeah, but you know, because I like to take action, you see? So uh, I was just wondering what I was going to, and I thought of these, these little Father Matt's family, and I said, oh, you know what? I, the, Lord, turn my face with grace to love. It was more like God had to grab my head and twist me, okay? I was afraid it was going to break my neck, but just coming aware of the fact that I didn't want to be that, I wanted to be this, it opened something with grace, with God's gift. And I said to myself, Joseph, have faith. He's not here by accident. His plane didn't get in early for nothing. Trusting in providence, right? 
uh, the attachment to what needed to happen, the acceptance that perhaps he could bring something that I wasn't bringing to it. Hard to believe, but it's possible, okay. <laughs> then the control thing. I wanted to control the way, this is my, th and it's gonna be like this. Well, I had to go to cooperation. I couldn't get rid of him, so we had to learn how to cooperate, okay? And then the final thing, the entitlement. My wedding rehearsal, I'm doing it. I want it to be my way, and I said, oh boy. He just retired. He's been doing this his whole life. It's his first shot back at a wedding after a while. He's in his glory doing this rehearsal. He's so happy. I had empathy suddenly. Now, was I completely better? No. If I could have said poof and he disappeared, yes. But guess what? I was okay. I was truly became peaceful in the situation to the extent that I could. It was a moment of grace where God's power was tremendously evident. And it came from a simple thing of asking God to turn my face with grace to love. Did I want to love my friend? Did I want to be happy that we were working together? Of course, I want to have faith and be accepting and cooperate. I want to have empathy. It's just how do we get there with God's help? So that's what we'll be looking at in our theme, and I hope you can come and join us in this and use the prayer cards. You're going to have a prayer card. Honestly, in the beginning, just look at the faces, and when you find out that you're Say, Lord, turn my face with grace to love. We'll take this in stages, week by week. But right now, I can witness to you and attest to the fact that in a real situation, in a, uh, even with other people around, it can somehow touch us and turn us. And you know what? When that happens, you know that God's spirit and power and life are in us. God is love. He enabled me to see God's face in another person in a way that would not have happened had not this prayer and a, a desire for spiritual growth uh, been present with God's grace. So I invite you to do that. Now, let's end with this, okay? What is God desiring for all of us right now? To be with us in a prayerful and intimate way to help us to turn our face with grace to love. So let's make the face that God is showing to us all the time. The face of seeing someone you love that you haven't seen for a while and wanting to be with them. Got it. <laughs>